Welcome. In this lesson, we'll learn about construction uh, specifications. Uh, we'll, we'll understand how these specifications are described and organized. So we learned in the previous video about quality control, quality assurance as part of the quality uh, management. Um, and we know that work requirements, which quality is about f fulfilling these requirements, um, the requirements can be described in both the specifications or drawings. Uh, so they both kind of represent your quality documents that you have. Question here is what is what happens if, if there is a discrepancy between drawings and uh, specifications? Um, so it's always, as we said before, it's always better to send an RFI to the architect to clarify any confusion. But let's say you didn't catch this conflict and the architect understand that, that you have to fulfill the requirement mentioned in one document and then you, you, you comply with the requirement, which is a different requirement for the same uh, aspect in the other document. So you have a conflict here. Uh, but from uh, practice, people and, and, and legal cases and court cases, uh, specifications normally precede over drawings, which is funny because people put more effort in drawings and copying uh, specifications from a project to a project. But now, um, uh, legally, specifications have the up, upper hand, you can say, unless you say in specifications that uh, in such conflicts, uh, drawings will govern. So specifications are not kind of copy-paste sticks that you move from a project to a project. You have to pay really attention to. If you are a spec writer, it's, it's, a, it's something you can take lightly here. Um, construction specifications are organized in different ways depending on what type of project you're dealing with. So in building projects, they follow uh, a standard outline uh, following the CSI master format. Uh, but for civil uh, engineering projects like uh, uh, roads uh, or like generally or dams, water districts, uh, these districts or agencies or departments have their own uh, specification or standard specification um, and they follow their own kind of uh, way of structuring the specifications. Uh, they might follow a national kind of guideline or entity. So the Department of Transportation might follow the guidance of the Federal Highway Administration. Um, so, but, but there, you can see now that depending on the project type, buildings versus civil, uh, you will have different kind of uh, representation of the specifications and organizing these specifications. So for this course, we'll focus more on, on the standard one, the most standard one, which is the building projects following the CSI master format. So CSI master format is a 50 uh, division uh, kind of, um, you can think of it like a, a table of content in some way. It's a standard table of content, so people will know where to look for specific information. So it has 50 divisions. Some of these divisions are the reserves, so they're just uh, placeholders for maybe future technology that will come or revisions, uh, reorganization of the, uh, of the outline here. Uh, but division zero here covers the uh, bidding requirements or procurement and contracting requirements. Uh, so that's when the project is released in the bid package, this is where you will find the bid uh, kind of instructions. Next is Division 1, which is the general requirements, we'll cover that. And then technical requirements are Division 2 all the way to 49. So general requirements here cover the uh, requirements, uh, what we call the overhead items or requirements that are not related to specific activity or work in your project. So, for example, coordination, uh, how the coordination should be done, the proced procedures for meeting, um, how the progress of the work will be represented and tracked, uh, quality management or quality control program here, um, detailing this, the, this such a program, 
program uh, or the temporary facilities, what need to be furnished on site for both uh, subs and also the architect and engineers and owner representative. Um, and then the closeout requirements, what need to be submitted, keys and all of that uh, stuff that we covered in the project closeout uh, video. Um, so you can summarize that at the end, that Division 1 provides information for defining the minimum overhead for a project because all of these requirements need to be done be done by someone so you need to staff your project team project engineers or field engineers or superintendent project managers depending on how much work they are expected to do from the overhead items um, and also it defines what need to be done in terms of coordination and communication the minimum level of course as a project management um, our project manager, it, it's important for you to do very well in coordinating and communicating the project requirements to different team members. Uh, the technical divisions from 2 to 49, they describe the products and the equipment that need to be uh, installed in different divisions of work. Uh, and every division is detailed in subdivisions. So, for example, here I'm showing just part of the uh, a CSI master format, which is division 03. And you can see here, it's kind of like the outline. It's a detail to the sub-outline. So 0315 is concrete accessories, so water stops, uh, joints. But then you move into 0320, which is the reinforcement. Within the reinforcement, 0321, you have the bars, you have the fabric, uh, you have the fibrous composite reinforcement. And then you move into 0330, which is cast in place concrete. And then you can define it by the type of concrete here, 0331. It's a structure concrete or architecture concrete or low density concrete. So you can, you can specify and de keep detailing the unique uh, parts of every work division here. So Division three, as the whole, is the, about all everything about concrete, and then starting from the beginning, zero three one maintenance, and as you can see here in in the slide, um, I will post on the course uh, website the uh, CSI master format, the, the, the a sample of it. It's it's a lot of pages, but again, it's a co construction project to have a template to organize the specifications for a generic construction project, you need a long outline. There are a lot of detailed um, and different trades, and it, it, it's really a humongous task to kind of outline and standardize how you actually communicate these uh, specifications. It doesn't give you the actual text within each one of these divisions and subdivisions, but it tells you how people expect you to organize your specifications. Another way CSI Master Format is used for is for cost control. So when you report your costs, if you remember um, uh, in, in construction documentation, part of it is uh, labor, material, and equipment reporting, the cost codes, people usually follow what is recommended by CSI Master Format. So it's not only for standardizing specification communication, it's about also standardizing how you track uh, your cost and collect and, and collect the data of your your costs. So now each one of these the subdivisions, the kind of the last leaf uh, of that kind of uh, division subdivisions kind of branches, uh, each one now is detailed by in three different parts. First, the general part, or the different general uh, section of that subdivision. So, <clears throat> for example, if we talk about heavy weight structural concrete. Part one general will uh, describe the related work items uh, specified elsewhere. So it will start outlining the subdivisions that are related to this subdivision you are speaking. The next is the description of the work. So it will tell you here it's uh, heavy weight structured concrete, it's cast in place concrete, footings, foundation walls, or, uh, or, or structural slabs. And then the next here is quality assurance. What are the different requirements that need to be, or procedures for quality assurance? So standardized or standard tests. What are the qualifications of people to do these tests and, and qualification of manufacturers who are providing any 
uh, material that you use in, in the work. And then submittals, so how you can actually communicate the quality requirements and achieving the achievement of these uh, requirements, you have submittals. So here, <clears throat> and this is the, the one of the big, very important parts from the construction measurement aspect, when you deal with specs is what do I need to communicate and deliver to the architect for approval? Submittals. So you have your ReadyMex concrete uh, design document, the admixtures, uh, samples of these admixtures, or at least the product sheets. We'll see that in the in the submittals uh, video. Uh, so you're submitting the different products uh, and qualifications of the work here. Next part is the product. So sometimes you specify specific product commercial products. So here it's cure and seal for uh, sealing and coating. Um, the architect f dealt with that before and they would like, if possible, to use the same product. Or they all say here at the end, or approved equal. So you as a contractor, you will try to get this one. If not, then you will propose, like we say in, uh, in, in change orders or RFIs, you might, one of the reasons would be for product substitution. Here, here you go. So suggested product might not be available and you want to substitute it. The last thing here is execution, and it's rarely used. Uh, typically, it will find in a lot of specs, it will just say follow manufacturer instructions. Why is that? Because as an architect, you should not be really going deep into execution and defining means and methods. We, we, I, I keep saying means and methods here are responsibilities of the contractor. They get paid for that. So as an architect, you should not kind of uh, meddle into the contractor business. Otherwise, you will be liable for whatever things can happen while doing the work. So very rarely used, uh, but if it's used, the architect should have, uh, should understand the exposure, the liability exposure that they are putting themselves into. That's it for this video, and I will see you in other videos. Take care of yourself and those around you.